Hey everybody, I'm Jody Ganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. This is the LED lighting and otherwise uh, lighting dedicated episode of the Q&A series that I put out every single month in direct response to your comments and questions. I do get back to you rather quickly and um, sometimes it's a little bit late, but anyways, um, the best ones go on these episodes and these episodes are actually a little bit late here for um, December covering from uh, November 2016. These episodes are usually a little bit longer um, and a little bit more detailed and the times are usually also in the description of the video so you can skip ahead if you would like. And this time, uh, not a lot of questions on lighting, but we'll do a few of them. And in the future, for um, it's easier to get my attention through email at questions at smarterhomelife.com. The YouTube comment system is really kind of screwy and I tend to miss some of them because just the way that the nature of uh, some of them come through and the way that the comments are managed. So anyways, um, I do read as many of the comments as I can and uh, obviously the email is the best way to get a hold of me for getting your questions answered and like I said, the best ones wind up on these episodes. So let's dive right into it. Um, from November 2016, an email from Todd. I'm gonna combine actually this one and the next one kind of together a little bit because they're similar uh, or actually they're on the same topic sort of in general with Phillips Hue. Email from Todd, uh, great shows. Thank you very much, I enjoy making them. Um, do you know or have you heard whether there is a version three of the Philips Hue BR30 bulbs? And those are the flood bulbs. I actually don't have one uh, in my hand, but they're the flood bulbs, just general purpose uh, lighting, uh, not, uh, not a spotlight of any kind, but color changing and whatnot. Uh, Philips has confirmed they are working on it uh, for generation three. I heard that they were originally going to be out before the end of the year. That obviously hasn't happened. Um, it's probably in early 2017. Uh, I will be at CES um, in about two weeks from now. Um, actually, a little bit less than that. So um, when I'm up there and I get to talk to um, a rep from uh, Philips, I will ask that question again, but they may simply say, we don't know, or they just may not want to say it and then surprise everybody with a press release. So I'm not sure, but uh, look for those coming soon. I would assume that they're going to upgrade the, the BR30 soon. I guess it was October when they uh, released the um, the new A19. And I think it's just going to be the color and ambiance. I don't know that they're going to issue a new generation of the white ambiance, which just has the um, multiple shades of white from um, cool to warm. I uh, guess the colors were the colors and some of the dimming were the main uh, pain points for the generation two of the uh, color and white bulbs of the A19, the standard A19 screw-in bulbs. So thank you for your question and uh, hopefully that um, when, when, when I know something, you'll know something. So be sure to also um, follow Smarter, Smarter Home Life on Twitter and Facebook because those updates tend to come out even faster um, than the YouTube videos and articles on the website. So check for that. Uh, thank you for the uh, the email. And we're going to move on to the next Phillips Hue thing from Lewis L. Uh, got to us, I think, through the uh, website. Um, tried to Google, but not much information on the bridge difference between the Hue second and third gen. I know the bulb got some upgrades, but what about the bridge? Is it the exact same model? I have received a number of those questions and comments. It is the exact same model from everything that I know. Um, the generation two is the square uh, or with rounded corners. The generation one was kind of the exact, just it's just a round hub. Um, generation two added capabilities like HomeKit. Um, and I know that they added some additional processing to it, um, but there is no generation three. The generation two comes in the generation three kit and you can also buy it separately, um, but that's about it. They didn't really, um, I have no information from them that they issued a generation three. Uh, and if you look at the dates on say amazon.com of when the product was available, uh, it is as of uh, 2015 uh, last year. So there's, there's the answer to that. That's a short and simple one. Before we go on, uh, and thank you, of course, for your sending in your, your email um, on that. So before we go on to the other two questions, Steve B, Calvin C, Patrick B, Patrick M, Douglas L, Steve R, Richard B, Justin H, Ray K, Sean, Orlando M, Casey B, John S, Clay W, and Robert W, and especially to these two, 
Michael D., who has contributed the most of any of the Patreon contributors, and Jim J., who's been contributing the longest of any of the Patreon contributors. Thank you all so much because you have helped to make the show what it is today. You've contributed directly to the budget, which goes to anything from buying new gadgets to review to replacing things um, that break that have to be replaced for the show to continue uh, or to be upgraded. And part of that all goes into the budget, which is also kind of how I keep the lights on. So anyways, um, thank you so much. So I ask people, if you really love the videos, if you love the content, if you get something out of it, maybe give something back. It's a, it's the holiday time of year. Uh, if you're watching this right after the episode comes out, there's rewards that you can get through Patreon, uh, through joining us, and uh, you can start at $1 a month. Patreon uses PayPal, so you can opt to use PayPal as, uh, as the way to contribute, which is super easy because like everybody has PayPal. And there are rewards for um, for contributing at higher amounts, and there's those are all at patreon.com slash smarterhomelife. The reason I ask for the contributions is, you know, again, if you get something out of the show, maybe consider giving something back. That's how these that's how these things grow and uh, work uh, so that in concert with all of the other little sources, including ad revenue, that I can grow this and I can actually do this on a full-time basis and put out even better episodes, more concise videos, more informational episodes about what I'm doing here in the kind of the home studio where I live and work. And uh, it makes the show grow a little bit faster. Let's move on to the other questions for LED lighting. I will scroll back up here. And let's see. Uh, email from Ryan P. I'm looking at getting some LED bulbs, starting off with some of my lamps. Uh, I've got a SmartThings hub and Alexa and many smart connected devices. I'm leaning to Sylvania or Cree bulbs, but wasn't sure if LifeX or Hue should even be in the running. I took them off the list mainly because of the price. Many people do that because they see the, the smart bulbs as being way too expensive for what they are. Um, I don't necessarily need color options or dimming. Any help that you could provide would be fantastic. Now, he's got, and uh, I've already responded to him via email, um, and he says, I love your videos, exclamation point. Thank you so much. I do really enjoy making the videos, and if it wasn't for everyone writing in and, and commenting and you know liking the videos and so forth, I probably wouldn't be making them because <laughs> I don't make them for myself. I make them for you guys. So thank you so much. Um, let's see. Sylvania or Cree, and I'm not sure if he's specifically referring to smart bulbs or regular bulbs. Uh, regular, we'll just call them like dumb bulbs. Um, Sylvania and Cree make both of those, Sylvania has a, um, a line called Lightify, uh, which runs on the same Zigbee uh, technology that uh, Philips Hue and some other bulbs do. Cree also makes a Cree connected bulb um, that is also a good um, bulb. Both of them, uh, the Cree just comes in a standard um, uh, white light bulb that dims and brightens and that's all about all you can do with it. The Lightify line um, is similar to Hue and LifeX where it does color changing and multiple options. But they also make just regular bulbs as well. Uh, the Lightify line also has some just regular white bulbs. But if you're referring to just generic bulbs, um, there are many of them out there. Um, Cree just reintroduced their entire lineup a few months ago, refreshed their entire lineup. Uh, Sylvania has had some bulbs um, out there as well, just regular LED bulbs. They're both excellent choices. We're in 20, we're nearly in 2017 now, and the the general um, market of LED lighting has really advanced to where it's compatible with most dimmers. It's going to put out a pretty pretty good pretty um, beautiful white light um, even uh, the, even the sort of the base generic uh, bulb um, from all of the different vendors are going to put out a good light it may they've while they have solved the uh, any remaining flicker issues um, some people just will perceive light as more yellow or more white depending on how they see it and certain manufacturers say soft white some say warm white and that will depend um, that uh, soft white is more white, warm white is more yellow, 
and so your preference uh, could be determined by basically looking at it. So some of them have in-store displays. I would encourage you um, looking at Sylvania, which is generally carried by Lowe's. Cree is generally carried by Home Depot. Um, I would go to the in-store displays and look at those if you're just looking at generic bulbs and not smart bulbs. Um, I have not personally reviewed the Sylvania Lightify line um, for the smart bulb side, um, but it generally has good reviews. Um, I'll say that. Um, I have, I've been in the process of reviewing the Cree connected bulb. It's a good connected bulb. It dims up and down and it puts out a nice light. And that's about all there is to say about it. I haven't even put out a review because that's about all I'm going to say on the review. So it'll be very short. Um, look for that, um, probably early in 2017, uh, sometime in January. And, um, that's pretty much it. The prices of the regular bulbs are pretty inexpensive. The prices of the base smart bulbs from Cree and Sylvania are lower than um, Hue or LifeX. Um, so that's something to look into. Um, you would still need, you have a, you have a smart things hub. So you're, you're part of the way there. You can connect the, um, the Cree bulb directly to your smart things hub via the app with no problem. So you don't need something else, um, like a Hue bridge or something like that. And I believe with Sylvania, you can do the same thing with their base, uh, Lightify, um, products as well. So I hope that, um, answers your question. Thank you again for your kind words on the videos and I will continue making new videos. And the last lighting question comes from a video comment from YouTube from Shay F. Thank you for commenting. Can a Philips Hue GU10 bulb, this is, you know, one of these little, um, spotlight uh, focused beam, uh, you know, it looks like a mini spotlight and you use them generally in track lighting fixtures. It has two little pins on the end of it and you push it in and turn to lock it in place. I think most people are familiar with them. I use them in my track lighting fixtures, um, but I'm not using the Philips Hue uh, version of those, but they do make them that are color changing and uh, multiple shades of uh, cool to warm white light. Uh, warm white. I said that right. Okay. Uh, can it be used in a light holder on a dimmer switch? Many thanks. Thank you for commenting. Um, light holder, no problem in terms of she, uh, Shay uh, is probably just saying, you know, an existing fixture where you, you know, you put the bulb in and, and turn it to lock it in place. But on a dimmer, you can't. Here's the scenarios. Smart lighting of any kind and LED and fluorescent lighting that is not specifically marked um, dimmable should not be used with a dimmer. So if something is not rated for a dimmer, don't put it on a dimmer and don't ever put smart lighting on a dimmer. Smart lighting has electronics built into it for communications and other things. And it has the dimming circuitry built into the bulb itself. So you can't dim it because it'll have unpredictable results and it could uh, completely damage or I guess it could, I guess it could cause a fire uh, or cause the uh, cause a problem, but that's probably pretty rare. But just don't put it on put, don't put it on a dimmer. Uh, what you could do if you want to keep the fixture uh, and the dimmer switch is somewhere in line or it is somewhere else, like it's on a wall, you could disable the dimmer switch. You could replace it with just a wall plate. Um, uh, Philips Hue bulbs don't resume at least not currently, they don't resume their last um, color and, uh, or, and or shade of white and or um, uh, brightness level uh, when you flip the power back on. So you could put it on a regular switch. If it's a dimmer switch that's on a wall, you could change that to an on off, you know, just a toggle switch or a decora on off switch. But again, if you shut it off, then you're gonna have to reset um, the, uh, the hue bulbs on that, um, or the hue GU10 uh, spotlights. Um, via the app because they won't resume their um, their last state. So I would say if it's a dimmer switch on a wall, I would just um, uh, take the dimmer out if you're if you're okay with doing electrical work. If you're not, ask someone who is or an, a licensed electrician, um, and you would just um, hardwire it, uh, the wires together so that it would be constant on, and just replace it with a blank wall plate. Um, if it's somewhere, if the dimmer circuitry or the dimmer, um, like a rotating dimmer knob is somewhere in the fixture somehow, you could, again, if you're okay with doing electrical work, you could cut it out of the circuit and wire that back together, um, for constant on there's more, I've, I've done that personally, um, previously. Um, but anyways, um, a few different ways, but, uh, if you 
uh, the last option, of course, just buy a new fixture, but that may not be an option for you. So um, that is the answer. Philips Hue does make a, a variety of uh, lighting products uh, from GU10 to A19 and, and BR30, um, and they continue to be pretty popular. So um, that is, those are all of the questions that I've got for, um, for this particular episode uh, here, and hopefully uh, I will be getting to your December uh, lighting questions a little bit faster um, in terms of the show um, for once we get uh, past uh, CES in January. I will be at the Consumer Electronics Show, now known only as CES in January, uh, starting January 6th. So there will be multiple updates through social media and then a daily update to the YouTube channel and all kinds of exciting news there. So otherwise, if you do like the Q&A videos uh, and you've got more questions, send them in to questions at smarterhomelife.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, the comments, like I said, don't always get through correctly. And of course, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, share this video out and make your home a little bit smarter every single day. With every decision that you make, every product that you buy, you make it a little bit smarter on that road, on that journey, to becoming a truly smart home. And on that journey, your home is a smarter home, as I like to call it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Deganzik, and I'll see you next time.